Hello and welcome to video lecture number 48. Today our lecture is entitled The Turning Point, 1863. We have two sections that we're covering. The first is Emancipation and the second is Vicksburg and Gettysburg. So as the war progressed, its character and aims underwent a fundamental change. Uh, most important for the Union, uh, it became not simply a war to quell a rebellion, but a war to end slavery. At first, Lincoln was careful to avoid addressing the issue of slavery. Uh, he had a conception of his own powers as president and commander-in-chief that limited his authority to enforcing the law and upholding federal authority. Moreover, he was eager to keep the remaining slave states in the Union, uh, hoped to entice seceded sta uh, slave states back in, and needed to pay heed to a northern white public opinion that was hardly as much opposed to slavery as he, let alone the radical Republicans to his left. The stalemate of 1861 and 62, however, convinced more and more northerners that winning the war required more than strictly military means. Slavery was a major prop to Confederate power, uh, and it soon became apparent that the slaves themselves regarded Union troops and the missionaries that came in their wake as liberators. Given the racism prevalent among white Union soldiers, uh, much of that grateful admiration was misplaced. Nonetheless, increasing numbers of Northerners began to endorse the notion that at least a threatened strike against slavery might end the war more quickly uh, and appeal to those slaves itching to forward insurrection within the Confederacy. Accordingly, on September 22, 1862, Lincoln issued a carefully worded preliminary Emancipation Proclamation which was followed by the formal proclamation on January 1st, 1863. The Confederacy reacted with outrage, and Lincoln's move on the, uh, it also stirred hostility in the North. The Republicans suffered major reverses then in the fall elections of 1862, and the shift in war aims, along with resentment at the iniquities of war mobilization, led to serious riots in New York City in July of 1863. But the character of the war had shifted irreversibly. Slaves increasingly undercut the Confederacy by fleeing to Union lines, with many of the men enlisting in the Union Army to fight for their own and their people's freedom. In the meantime, uh, the Union's advantages in war mobilization made themselves felt. Uh, the Union naval blockade tightened. The army of Ulysses S. Grant scored a major strategic victory in the West at Vicksburg, uh, breaking the Confederacy's supply lines to Texas and Mexico. Uh, Robert E. Lee's uh, string of brilliant victories finally ended at Gettysburg. So by the end of the year, uh, the Confederate cause was still potent, uh, but it was now clearly on the defensive. So let's have a closer look then at the turning point of the year 1863, starting with emancipation. As war casualties mounted in 1862, Lincoln and some Republican leaders accepted Frederick Douglass's argument and began to redefine the war as a struggle against slavery. Exploiting the disorder of wartime, tens of thousands of slaves escaped and sought refuge behind Union lines, where they became known as contrabands. Congress first passed uh, the, the first Confiscation Act in 1861, which authorized the seizure of all property, including slaves, used to support the rebellion. In April of 1862, Congress enacted legislation ending slavery in the District of Columbia, and in June, it finally enacted the Wilmot Proviso. In July of 1862, the second Confiscation Act declared forever free all fugitive slaves uh, and all slaves captured by the Union Army. Lincoln's controversial Emancipation Proclamation then of Jul January 1st, 1863 changed the nature of the conflict. Union troops became agents of liberation. To reassure Northerners who sympathized with the South or feared race warfare, uh, Lincoln urged slaves to abstain from all violence. Let's then move on to our next section, Vicksburg and Gettysburg. 
Vicksburg, Mississippi, uh, surrendered to the Union Army on July 4th, 1863, followed by Port Hudson, Louisiana. Five days later, establishing Union control of the Mississippi River. Grant had cut off Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas from the rest of the Confederacy. Hundreds of slaves deserted their plantations. Uh, the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania uh, was a great Union victory uh, and the most lethal battle of the Civil War. Uh, after Union victories at Gettysburg and at Vicksburg, Republicans reaped political gains in their elections, while in the South, Confederate elections were sharply against politicians who supported Jefferson Davis. The Confederates' defeats at Vicksburg and at Gettysburg ended their prospect of winning foreign recognition uh, and also ended their prospect of acquiring advanced weapons from the British. Uh, British manufacturers were no longer dependent on the South for cotton. They were getting their cotton elsewhere now. Uh, however, they were dependent on the North for cheap wheat. Uh, also, the British championed the abolitionist cause uh, and they wanted to avoid provoking a very well-armed United States. So that's it for this section, uh, video lecture number 48. Short and sweet, we've got the emancipation of the slaves and the face of the war fundamentally changing and we have uh, major Union victories at Vicksburg and Gettysburg that ultimately turn the tide of this conflict. So let's go ahead and answer the review questions at the bottom of the screen. Continue on with your notes and that's it.